morning and welcome to worship. It was lovely to um, hear everyone greeting each other this morning um, as you came into the meeting. Uh, following on from the meeting, um, the band will be visiting Muriel Belton. Uh, Muriel is in St. Benedict's Hospice at the moment, so the, the band will play at the hospice. Um, I know that you will be praying for Muriel and the family at this time, um, as well as all members of our fellowship who are suffering from ill health or in need at this time, and for the families who support them. Um, Major David was involved in a road traffic accident last night, uh, but he's at home and recovering well, I think probably just full of aches and pains this morning. Um, and also, um, Jill Wall has been in hospital this week, uh, but again is recovering well at home after her procedure. This coming week, we have a very, very busy week. Um, Monday, the cafe meets at 9.30 as usual, followed by the Cameo Club at 1.30. Wednesday is our Fireflies activity, uh, the youth ministry for children aged 5 to 11, which starts at half, between half three and four o'clock. Wednesday is the core mission council at 7.15. Parent and toddlers on Thursday at 9.30. Then on Friday, coffee morning from 10 till 12. And then on Friday, we have Crafty Creations. Um, this is a new venture, um, sort of meeting together to do some Christmas crafts for a couple of hours. Uh, you know, whether you feel you're crafty or not, please come along and I'm sure you'll just enjoy um, the get together. And then on Friday, uh, Messy Church uh, will be uh, from four o'clock till half five. Um, all of our um, activities um, allow us great opportunities, don't they, to reach out into the community. So please use these activities to invite friends, family, neighbours along to these. Um, another kind of uh, great community activity is our Choir of Light, which we have been doing for the last few years. Um, we commence the practices on the 7th of November, so please come along, and the, don't make the excuse I can't sing, um, just come along anyway, I'm sure you can pick up the tune and you'll have a great um, night. Um, so that's Thursday the 7th of November at 8pm. Um, it's just sort of uh, five weeks of practising and then the choir will perform at the um, candlelight carol service which is on the 12th of December. Um, so as I say, lots and lots of things to get involved in and to invite people along. And we are pleased to have Major Elizabeth leading our meeting this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Yes, Major David's a little bit sore. He's got a bit of whiplash and uh, headache. So he's resting today. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Unfortunately, things happen and we don't expect it. And uh, we just pray God's blessing on all of those of our fellowship who aren't well just now. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so we wait this morning, don't we? We come, I hope, in anticipation of the blessing that God has for each of us. And so we're going to commence singing, Come in, my Lord, come in, and make my heart thy home. Come in and cleanse my soul from sin and dwell with me alone. Thyself to me be given in fullness of thy love. Thyself alone wilt make my heaven, though all thy gifts remove. Shall we rise and we'll sing this straight through, please. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Come in, my Lord. Come in. That last verse, my Lord, thou dost come in. I feel it. Do you feel it? Do you feel the power of the risen Lord within your soul? I feel it in my soul. We have come into this place. We're going to sing that just now. And gathered in his name to worship him. We have gathered together to worship the one and only God. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we come with lots of things on our heads, I'm sure. Have I put the roast in the oven? Have I got enough for lunch? What's going to happen tomorrow? Oh, I've got an appointment next week. There's lots of things that come into our minds, doesn't it? We are human. And just now we're going to bring all those things to God and say, Lord... Here I am. Joan this morning had that beautiful song that said, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling. Let's just now enter into a time of prayer where we can bring our concerns, our thanks, our gratefulness to God just now as we sing this song. Thank you. Will someone please pray with us just now?
And as we come to worship this morning, we just want to praise your name and worship your name as we bow before you. And so we pray that uh, we will just hear your words speaking to our hearts as we listen this morning. And that as we share with you in communion, that we will be able to share that message with others in this coming week. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here this morning. We thank you for the friendship and the fellowship that we feel in this church. And we pray for each member. And we pray for each member who at this time is far from them. Uh, all are known to you. Uh, we think of all of them and just want to express our love and care for each one of us. And we pray that as we bring them to you just now, that uh, your arms of love will just be around and help them, helping them in this situation just at this time. And uh, we just pray that they will feel peace and they will feel calmness as they come into your presence. And so, Lord, we pray for our community work within this uh, area. And we pray that uh, you will just give us many opportunities to be able to come alongside people outside of this uh, building. And uh, because of that, people will just be influenced by the love of God as we share with them as your disciples. And so we pray for our meeting just now. We just pray for Major Elizabeth as she speaks to us. And we pray that we just receive that blessing this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, I did warn somebody this morning. I needed their help. Do you know what this is, Aaron? Pardon? A wire. It is. Do you know what kind of wire it is? Anybody? What? An extension cord. Well, an extension cord. Do you know what an extension cord does, Aaron? No? Oh. Okay, well, <clears throat> it's used for in case I've got a lamp or a radio or one of these Google boxes, whatever they are. I don't know what they're called nowadays. Boom boxes, we used to call them, you know. Um, and if my plug, I can't reach and I want the lamp here, I've got to use one of these, okay? Because the extension plug, so my lamp, I'll plug into the extension cord, like that. And then this will plug into the plug over there. And look how far I can, you can get longer ones than this. So I can put that one there, and I can go all the way, way over here. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? How you can do that. You, how, how many of you have extension cords at home? Uh, you see, everybody, I think everybody has something that doesn't reach and they need something to connect um, to something else, either your TV, because I know in my house, it's not just the extension cord because of length, but the extension cord because you've got the TV, you've got the sound bar, You've got, pardon? The hair, dryer. The hair well, not plugged into that plug, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have more than one plug, so you need sometimes four, two or four. I try not to overload, you know. I might uh, blow up the house. Um, I nearly did the other week, actually. The lights all went, and it's because I had uh, dropped a bit of water and didn't realize <laughs> the extension cord was on the floor. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. We, got, we, we, we figured it out in the end. Um, but extension cords are great because they connect us to something else, don't they? And so as I was thinking this morning about the extension cord, I was also thinking about how we talk to God. Okay? When we want to ask him something, what do we do? We pray. We pray. We've just prayed just now, haven't we, Aaron? Yeah? We've just prayed just now. We simply pray. 
When we are afraid, we ask God to keep us safe. When we are lonely, we talk to God as a friend. But isn't it wonderful? I think it's absolutely wonderful that we can talk to God ourselves without having to use another person. We don't have to have an extension cord, you could say. We don't need that to talk to God. He's always there and he's always ready to listen. So the next time, Aaron, you see an extension cord, look for one. I'm sure your Nana has one. Or is it Gran or Nana? Grandma, okay. You never know these days. I'm not even Gran or Nana, I'm Avia. So it's like, you never know. But um, Grandma, I'm sure, has an extension cord at home. But when you see that extension cord at home, remember, remember that you can talk to God without having to ask, ask someone to pray for you. You can do it yourself. Sometimes it's good to ask someone to pray for you while you're praying as well, because sometimes we need that. But listen to these words from John 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. This verse tells us that Jesus hears us, and we should listen to what he tells us to do. So we're going to sing a brilliant song. It's great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked skill, skill to have a friend like Jesus. And this is where it says he's always there. He always listens. He always hears me when I talk to him. Okay? He loves me now and will forever. I'll choose for him every day, day, day. Okay? So you have actions to do. That's your exercise this morning. Okay? Right. We need to stand for this song. He's always there. He always listens. So remember that when you see the extension cord next time. You can come to God and pray and not have to have anybody else to do it for you. At this moment in time, we're going to listen to the message from the songsters, please.
Amen. Amen. And thank you to Colin for taking the songs so that for that choice of song this morning. He leadeth me. God leads us in every situation of our lives. If we only just trust in him. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 verses 23 to 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against the anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. We're going to sing again. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known. No, why? Unworthy of such grace, he claimed me for his own. But I know, do you know who you believe in? You need to know if you're singing that verse, that chorus. But I know whom I believe it. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Shall we rise and we'll sing this straight through, please? <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that the band has warmed up, they are going to bring us their message, please. Band's message this morning is a meditation, and it's based on the hymn tune Ruth, and it's entitled Bountiful Light, and it features the words Light of Light, Shine Over Us. And this has been arranged by Michael Clack, who is uh, known internationally for being an organist um, from the Chalk Farm Citadel Salvation Army. So I hope you enjoy Bountiful Light.
Amen. Thank you very much to the band for that beautiful meditation this morning. I don't know if you've gathered this morning already that the theme running through it is... Anybody? I heard it. Prayer. Prayer. Now, Harry Emerson Fostick, he was an American pastor a long time ago, who once posed this possibility. Suppose that we could pray, that we could enter the throne room of God's grace only once every 25 years. And suppose that it had been 10 years since you had prayed and 15 years before you would be permitted to pray again. Would you not look forward to that day? I feel that sometimes we can neglect our opportunity to pray every day. Probably one of the greatest weaknesses as Christians is our weakness in prayer. Our reluctance to pray, maybe. But it wasn't so in the early church. Prayer was very much a part of the church's life, as evidenced by the accounts we read here in Acts. Prayer is one of the significant ministries of the church. What happens when a church prays? That's a thought for us. What happens when a church prays? Now, prayer is a response. It's a response to God's grace. Now, when Peter and John were released from prison, they joined the other Christians in Jerusalem. Now, while Acts doesn't actually say it, the church there may have been praying for Peter and John's freedom at the very moment they were released. Now, what did they do when they were set free? Did they go and hold a conference? They did try to find a way to keep from getting arrested again? Did they plan maybe retaliation? Well, no, they didn't. They prayed. They prayed. Prayer is the natural response of the Christian to God's grace. Now, God is described in verses, in the verses read earlier, as having a, a number of attributes. In verses, 20, in verses 24 and 28, he is described as the sovereign Lord. In verses 25 to 27, he is described as the self-revealing Lord. And then in verse 29, he is described as the seeing Lord. I feel that knowing of and relying on these attributes of God will make us a more prayerful people, I hope. Now, request and petition. We've heard these words, haven't we, when we talk about prayer sometimes. Request and petition is only one element, one element of prayer. But I feel that it is that part of prayer that we practice most often. But prayer should involve praise, thanksgiving, confession, and intercession as well as petition. We're very quick, aren't we, to ask, to petition God for something. But maybe not so good at the others. The nature of the request that we make to God centers on obedience to God and concerns our tasks for God. Notice that the early church... The early church's request centers on obedience to God and to the task of witnessing for God. They didn't pray, grant me, or grant that we may be kept safe, or grant that Peter and John 
may be protected or Lord, don't let it happen again. Instead, they prayed, Lord, help us. Help us get on with the job of proclaiming the gospel. Therefore, we should pray for boldness. Boldness in proclaiming the gospel. Now in verse 30, if you go back, in verse 30, it's, um, there, there is a resource there. It says this, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. The early church there is praying with expectancy. They expected God to do something for them. They knew that there was an adequate and powerful resource in the hand of God, and they claimed it. The greatest resource of all time is availability. The power of God in Jesus Christ. It is available to everyone. John Bisagno, who was a Southern Baptist minister, in his book, The Power of Positive Praying, tells of an er el elderly Russian woman who was being moved into low-income housing provided by the state. Now, when a friend inquired about why she had not heard from her son who had immigrated to the US, she replied that he had written her, but all he ever sent to her were little pictures of people whom she thought must be his friends. The friend asked if she had kept the pictures, and she had. And so she led him into the room that was covered with five, 10, and $20 bills pinned to the walls. The poor woman had been saving them so her son could tell her who his friends were when he came back to visit. She was a rich woman with many resources available but she had not called on them. God's resources are available to us. They are available through prayer. In verse 31, we can see that through prayer, there are results. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. We can know the presence of God. The presence of God was with the early church. When we are in the presence of God, something will happen. It may not always be just like you expected it to happen. There are times when God will deny. He'll say no. He'll deny the form of the prayer to grant the substance of the prayer. Now, this is what I mean by it. Augustine's mother, Monica, she prayed for 18 years, 18 years that he would be saved. And in that, she prayed that God would also keep him from going from North Africa to Italy. But it was in Italy, when he went to Italy, that he came under the influence of Bishop Ambrose. He found salvation in Christ and began his ministry as a Christian thinker. So the form of Monica's prayer, the mother, was denied but the substance was granted. Her son was saved and came into faith. Through prayer, we can know the power of God. We read earlier that the place was shaken with the power of God. 
in many ways, we can know the power of God in our lives when we pray. Through prayer, we can have boldness for mission and ministry for Christ's work. The early church had prayed in verse 29 for boldness in speaking the word of God. And in verse 31, we are told that they spoke then the word of God with boldness. When a church prays, the church... Now, the church is not this building. The church is each one of you. You are the body of Christ. We, together, are the body of Christ. The church prays. The church can have boldness in its ministry. A major ministry of the church should be prayer. When a church prays, it has power. Let us continue, because we do on a Sunday morning. But how is your prayer life? Individually, as we pray together, in our own homes, at work, at wherever we may be. When a church prays, it has power. Let us continue to be a praying church, praying for God's continued anointing on us so that we can bring the word of God with boldness to those in our community, to our families, friends, our neighbors. There are so many places we can have influence. Song number 790 says, take time. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. Even when the world is rushing on. Even when... There's so much going on. William Longstaff pens these words, spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control, thus led by the Spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon, soon shall be fitted for service above. Take time. Sometimes we don't have that time, do we? We feel that we have to go and do the next and do the next. But we need to be still and take time to speak often with our Lord. And to come together in prayer. For a church who prays has power. A church who prays has power. Let's sing this in an attitude of prayer just now. Thank you.
Shall we pray? And Lord, our Heavenly Father, as we have gathered here together this morning, we have worshipped and praised your name. Lord, as we go from this place, we just pray that you will just continue to be with us, that you will go before us, you will guard and guide us. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you are always there. Help us to trust in that, that we can come to you at any time. Help us to have that boldness in our prayer life. So Lord, as we go from this place, we just pray for ourselves and for those of our fellowship who have not been able to be here with us this morning. You know each and every one of them by name. And we just pray, especially for those who are unwell, that you will place your healing hands upon them, that you will strengthen them day by day. Lord, we just pray for them, that you will just have that encouragement in their souls, that they may feel your presence very near to them. So Lord, as we go from this place, we pray for your guiding hand to be upon us. All these things we ask in and through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In closing, we're going to sing that beautiful song, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand, bread of heaven. Feed me now and evermore. Shall we rise and sing this straight through, please? <laughs> benediction friends now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore amen amen may God bless you <laughs>